Right, so I've got something else uh, I've been playing around with today that I wanted to share with you. And again, it was uh, basically doing a bit of internet research, uh, and I came across the name, actually two names. The first one was a guy called Greenleaf Whittier Picard, uh, and he's an American guy. And then the next name was Wesley Gary, and his patent number is 190206. Now, um, Picard was working on radio. And obviously, as you know, a crystal set pulls out a, a very, very low amount of energy. Uh, and you can drive uh, a crystal earpiece with that uh, without any battery. And of course, it's um, doable, uh, are obviously milliwatts of power. Now, Picard wanted to um, drive a speaker, a loudspeaker. And he came up with this really interesting arrangement. Uh, and the core of the arrangement looks like that. So what you've got here is uh, a retaining block, and then G is a spring, and um, A is a coil, and B is a bit of soft arm. Uh, and then he put the radio circuit through the input, and obviously um, that created a magnetic field, and B would wobble about in the magnetic field. Uh, very similar to a solenoid. If, if we take away this retaining HG bit, then what we've got is a solenoid. Uh, and if we input into A, then that um, soft iron core will be pulled into the middle. Now, what Picard did was on the next picture down, um, he took a magnet and he put a magnet either side of the metal, uh, soft iron metal. And when the current passed through there, there was enough amplification of power to actually run a loudspeaker, which he's showing as D. So this is a truly a power amplifier. Now, um, not much used to us in its basic form because it was to run a loudspeaker, but let's say we took away the uh, restraining bit and uh, let the solenoid the coil run free and then kept all the other arrangement, then what would happen? Now, as I was asking those questions, I came across um, something that GoToLook had been working on as well. And, and um, his first video on this was from two years ago, and he's uh, recently started working on it again, and I have to say, it's pretty impressive. So I whipped up this little um, demonstration model, and all it is is uh, a coil here. There's a few hundred turns of um, 22 gauge, I think, 22 gauge on a wooden bobbin, uh, and there's a centimetre uh, centimeter diameter roll, uh, hole drilled through it, that's a bit of one centimetre steel rod, and I've waxed it so that the coil is free to slide up and down. Now in there we've got a um, one and a half square by uh, 0.3 millimeter thick square in, in, in 42 neo magnet, uh, and this is a bit of steel lamination that I had left over when I pulled away apart uh, a microwave oven core. So that's how it's arranged. There you go. You've got uh, laminate, magnet, steel, magnet, laminate. These two both point the same direction, so that's north north. Okay? Now, the really interesting thing about this is when this is out of here, so we can pull it out, because it's only held in by the magnet, and I take a uh, one and a half volt D, what we should see is absolutely nothing. And true enough, we see absolutely nothing. Although that is acting as a solenoid, the amount of power going through that coil is far too low to move the weight of the um, steel rod here. It's just too heavy, there's just, just too much resistance and not enough power. Now I did put a 12 volt on there and I'm going to go to move a little bit. So hardly anything at all really. Another interesting thing you'll want to see, because uh, we're going to suspend this in a minute, is if I do it in the air, then what we get is absolutely zip. Okay, so nothing at all going on there, and that's important in itself. So let's put it back into its framework. Now watch. I mean, this is actually pretty cool. Swap it over. And here we go. See, it moves! I mean, that's actually pretty cool. So we us swap that back over here, side. There you go. There you go. I mean, how cool is that? I mean, I can play with this for ages. Okay, so what this uh, little framework of uh, magnets and steel is doing is amplifying the power in the same way that um, Picard was doing 
back in the, um, oh, I think it was the 1800s, actually, when he was doing this, maybe like early 1900s. Um, certainly uh, a long time ago, and it's pre-1920. Uh, and we can do this now with a uh, one and a half volt battery. Uh, it's really quite impressive. And um, Goethe, look, as I say, has been working with this, so you really ought to see his video. Uh, very good. And um, what he does to further amplify the power is encase this in a steel cage. So it has two bits of steel here, here, and here. And I'm probably going to do that as well and play around with that a little bit uh, and see what we can get out of it. And um, Goethe, looks for the demonstration is actually pretty impressive, but these things I have to make myself, uh, and that's a little model that I made. And sure enough, it works. Well done, go to look, and well done, Picard, and very, very interesting. Let's play with that a little bit more.